Hey, this is Coach Rob. This is a video for setting up an organization in Viva Goals. I'm going to start in Teams, and I'm going to assume that you haven't used Viva Goals before, and I'm going to go to the three dots. That will allow me to search for any app. I can actually add, go to Viva Goals. If you don't see the Viva Goals, you may need to talk to your IT team and make sure that you've got that provisioned. I'm going to click on Viva Goals. It's going to open it up. The first thing you need to know is in this upper left-hand corner, you can have multiple organizations within Viva Goals. So I'm going to set up a new one. I'm going to come down here and say create or join an organization. It's going to say, okay, great. I'm just going to call this, let's call it champion consulting. And then again, you can see, can everyone in your organization access it or can you make it restricted? I'm just going to say, leave it open. And then I'm just going to show you for the basic purposes of setting this up, just a couple of tools that you want to look at first, a couple of settings. Right here, it's going to ask me to add members. For now, I'm not going to add members. I'm going to come back and do that later. But obviously, you can go through and you can add members from your organization here. But I'm going to skip that for now, and I'm going to get it all set up nice and neat. It does default. There's some really good tools to walk you through. I highly encourage you to go through and see some of the learning tools that they have. For now, I'm just going to close that. All right, so the first thing I want you to do <clears throat> is over here on the left is basically your menu bar for Viva Goals. What we're going to focus on for this video is just the admin. It's the only thing I'm going to cover. And there's only a few things in here that I want to highlight. You can see here on the top bar, we've got eight different options. I'm going to hit a few of these, and then I'll cover more in future videos. But the, the first one is just the basics for who can do, what are some of the security settings, who can create tags, who can export, and so forth. Nothing really here for you to change unless you want to restrict it to just a few members in your organization. Again, I could see where you might have an executive team, OKR board, and you just wanna make sure that only the executive team members can see that. Again, the second tab up here, members, as it sounds, this is where you can add more team members. There are a few different levels, so they can be admin users, regular users, or just viewers. Um, also, there's a Teams tab. Under Teams, the, the, the best use for this is having departments. So you could have all the team members uh, in sales uh, listed as one team. So then you could create an OKR just for sales and assign it to that team instead of having to repeat. The time periods, uh, the main reason for this is to establish different types of time periods. Uh, the default is obviously annual along with Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. You can see it's already set up for this year and next year. Um, the only reason this might change is if you're running on a trimester system or maybe even a, um, a biannual setup. Uh, also back at the top, there's a choice for being able to set up notifications. The Viva Goals will remind all team members once a week to do a check-in. This is a really powerful rhythm. Just decide what makes the most sense. Typically, you want to have this done prior to your weekly leadership meeting. It will also send out a summary update with all those changes once a week. Again, whatever is right for your organization. Integrations is fairly advanced. This is if you're going to be tied into other applications to be able to automatically update your key results. We'll talk about that in a future video. The one I really do want to spend a little bit of time on is this OKR model configuration. I think this is a really cool setup. It shows you what it's going to look like. So this is an example of what your OKRs will look like. You can see the objective here at the top. Then you can see the two key results underneath the objective. There's actually, in this particular example, a nested objective with its own key result. And then finally, what I like to call a project. At the very bottom of this is something called initiatives. So these are the actual action items. I cover this in a different video. I personally like to call this projects. It's up to you if you want to call it to-dos or milestones or something else. My 
preference is projects, and you'll see that update throughout Viva Goals. And then the final screen is just a few more settings about the OKRs and initiatives. Probably the biggest one is this one here. Do you want to allow multiple people to own a key result or objective? There's a lot of accountability practices where we say there's just one owner per key result or per objective. It's completely up to you. That's a high level overview of setting up a new organization. Here where it says pinned, this is Champion Consulting. You can see right now we don't have any objectives and key results. I'll cover that in the next video. If you have any questions, please reach out.